Hey everybody, uh, my name is Misha Leibovich. I'm the CEO of Miograph. Um, we're actually a startup in the middle of a mobile transition ourselves. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what we do, um, our thoughts on how consumers can do multimedia storytelling on mobile, uh, and then give you the sort of coming of age story and, uh, and, and how, how we came to where we are now. So first, a little background of, of where we are. So we power brands who want to engage their consumers, their fans, their audience, uh, whoever, whoever it is, in creating multimedia content. Uh, what we have offered so far is an embedded web product where we actually live on the publisher's or brand's own site. And there, everything happens on the site. The call to action, the um, creation, sharing, uh, and viewing, everything happens there. And it's been you know, a, good, a good web product. Um, what, the reason that we're doing this is because we know that brands and publishers, they're trying to do a couple things right now. One is get more engagement from your audience, get them to do something, not just passively consume content, build that, that loyalty. You also want to get more multimedia content. Video's hot, uh, multimedia's hot, and brands want more and more of it to the degree that they can't scale themselves in creating right now. So you see brands running user-generated content um, types of initiatives. But right now, it's either very simple or it's very complicated. It's either, OK, uh, upload a photo or do a tweet. OK, cool. Everyone can do it. It's very easy. But the output is not terribly interesting. You have a wall of photos, a wall of tweets, OK. Like, no one's going to watch it or like, tell their friends, hey, look at my photo among this wall of photos. On the other side, you have like video contests. And there you have really great output, um, really cool content people produce. But the percentage of the population that actually can produce uh, video or multimedia content that know how to use Final Cut Pro or even iMovie is very small. Now, the cool thing is consumers actually do want to express themselves about the brands and the, pub and the publications and the topics that they care about. But of all the people who, who of all your fans, um, you have you know, a certain percentage that actually would create content for you. Not everyone would. But only a tiny percentage actually can right now that have the skills and the tools to do so. So that's where we come in. Um, this is the, the whole kernel of our company, is trying to make it possible for anybody to create multimedia content um, easily, quickly, uh, that's fun, and uh, about things they care about. And you know we're we're doing well. We we have, oh, okay, we um, you know a bunch of brands on board, a bunch of brands in the pipeline, mostly in media right now. But we realized a couple months ago that something in our toolbox has been missing. It was a series of, of epiphanies uh, over over a couple months. Um, we knew that mobile was here and important. We we see the trends. We knew it was important. Um, but we did not know what to do exactly. Uh, the company is almost, and I imagine this is similar with maybe some of y'all's organizations as well. Um, we had our web product. We knew that it was good for what it was, but we kept trying to think about how could we take the current product and put it into mobile. And it just didn't really work. It, it, it wasn't really designed for that. Rather than thinking about how do we solve the same problem, of trying to make it easy to create content, um, but designing explicitly for mobile. And it, only recently did we kind of figure out how to do it. So had a series of uh, what are embarrassingly, it took me almost two years to figure out, but, but uh, epiphanies in the lotus position. Uh, so one is that when you're asking consumers to create uh, content, you're competing for very scarce amounts of, uh, of time and attention. With a web product, you're asking them to basically sit down and have a session at their computer. So that was one, one problem with what we had so far. Um, the content has to be both easy to create and easy to consume. And that was another epiphany that took us forever to think about. We were very influenced by, by Vine, how when you go through and you scan through, the cost of, of consuming a bad one is very low. 
because uh, it's because it's short. It's very easily consumable. So you, you got to think about both the creator. It's got if they're going to do it in the first place, but also the consumer. Um, one thing we found from a business perspective is that we're offering a product that consumers use. Um, so we thought, and this is our initial hypothesis, that if we just give it to, to brands and publishers, that they would put it on their site and they would just publicize it and then people would, would come. And that's true a good amount of the time, but not always. And currently we're basically only offering a technology, but with a web product we weren't offering like an audience to, to go with it. Um, so so this, this is a couple things that we, that we realized over the last couple months. So we came up with a new approach. Uh, one, uh, content is much shorter. Uh, I'm going to show you kind of some screenshots of the app we're developing now. But um, it, sort of meographs right now are made of moments, and we're limiting the app to three moments. So you know, 30 seconds to consume, less than five minutes to produce. So, so trying to get it to be creatable and consumable, competing for that scarce time and attention. We tried to identify what are all the barriers to creativity that people have right now. Like, Everyone wants to express themselves. Everyone wants to look awesome to their friends. Everyone has things they care about. But why don't people do it as much? You know, um, even, if this, even if the tool is easy enough to use, what's holding people back? And I'll talk about some of those. Um, and then also developing our own app. Um, this was something that we wrestled with for a while. Um, we knew we needed to have like, this sort of independent user base that we could activate on behalf of publishers and brands. Um, but we thought for a while about, OK, we could either develop our own app, we could provide an SDK for uh, existing apps, um, or we could be sort of a web view inside, um, inside existing apps. And we went through all these a lot, and there's pros and cons of each. Um, we ended up deciding to go with our own app because an SDK uh, puts a lot of development burden on whichever app we're going to be embedded in. And it just limits, it just makes it a lot higher uh, barrier to entry um, for, for publishers and brands to pick us up. And a web view, actually pretty easy to build in, um, but multimedia creation sucks through a web view. You just don't have access to the mic, to the, um, to the video, to all kinds of stuff you need. It's clunky, it's not native. Um, and so it would just be a bad user experience. Um, there's definitely challenges going with our own app. Um, with our web product, we're saying, hey, brands and publishers, we're going to come play in your house. And now we're saying, hey, come and play in our house. Um, definitely challenges to that, but it's the only way to ensure a, a good user experience. So let's go to the, the, the barriers to participation. So we thought a lot about you know, when, when, someone want, when, when you offer someone the ability, here's a really easy tool to use to create multimedia content. Um, the first problem they, they have is, Structure. Um, okay, so what am I creating content about? And sort of like more details specifically, like how, how, what goes in it? Like um, what you do photos, videos, like, like, like trying to ha keep them from having to like storyboard it out. Um, and th that's one sort of creative barrier to entry. Um, incentives. How do you get people to actually want to, to do it? I mean, we're talking less than five minutes to create, but still there has to be some, some, some payoff, be it um, fame, fortune, or feelings. Uh, and so how do we build that kind of stuff in? And um, assets. It, right now, a lot of things on mobile, they're requiring, they, they use the assets that are already on the phone, that, that the users themselves have captured. And there's a lot of use cases there um, when people capture things in their lives. However, if you want to build something that has a daily use case, uh, if you're requiring it to be all the user's own assets, you're basically requiring them to be doing interesting things all the time and documenting it all the time in order to, ha in order to be able to, to tell stories about that. So we wanted to say, how can we make all the assets that they might possibly need, not just their own, but other social media assets, other brand assets, other things from the web, easily available to them so they can express themselves um, and give their, give their commentary on things and not just, here's what I did. So um, the mobile app we're developing now is called Trio. Uh, like I said, it's limited to three moments, and we're, we're making it a, a very, a very simple, uh, simple use case. Um, consumption, 30 seconds, uh, approximately. Um, creation, uh, about five minutes. And we're trying to figure out, again, how do you make this really a daily use case? That it's not just, 
you know, some big campaign that a brand might do and like, okay, it's the end of the season, give us your, your roundup of the entire season. Like, that's cool and you get cool content out of it, but it's not a regular thing they're gonna come back to all the time, which makes it not a habit for the end consumer, which makes it, and from a business perspective, makes it that we're always kind of selling campaigns instead of a, a regular engagement with, with brands and publishers. I'll show you a couple, couple screenshots. These are all still in development, so, uh, you know, in the next, in, as we prepare to release, this might change a little bit, but the feed is very much, you know, influenced by Instagram, by Vine, um, you know, kind of some easy scroll um, so you can go through all the content. Um, the whole notion of, um, of structure we accomplish with, with missions where consumers can actually challenge each other, their friends, with like, hey, here is what the kind of content that I want you to create. And then here's specifically what goes into each moment. When you take a you know, photo of your shoes, a video of you doing a Frankenstein face, and a cute picture of a puppy you found. Um, very, very specific that people can reply to that turns it from a what do I do decision to a yes or no. Like, do I want to do this one? Do I want to do the next one? And then brands can come in there and provide guidance for the users as well, which is good for both the brand and the, and the consumer because the brand gets the kind of content that they want. They actually get to help help uh, guide that. But the consumer also gets like, okay, cool, now I know what to do. It's less creative burden on me. The creativity now is the fun part of finding that perfect you know, uh, fo uh, puppy photo or a photo of my hometown or whatever. Um, the actual creation process, we strive to make as simple as possible. Um, you know, just basic couple, couple types of media, photo, video, tweet, easily pull in. This is for a photo. Um, just make it so that uh, they can pull in you know, their own photos, but also their Facebook, their and other Instagrams, uh, Google Image Search, as well as when a brand wants to work with us, um, be able to provide brand assets themselves. This is something that we already provide actually with our web product, where um, we're working with like the NBA and TBS, where they're actually providing um, game clips and uh, clips from the show and audio and photo and stuff. So they can have fans use that, um, you know, create derivative content off existing um, uh, things that they have the rights to um, that is a high quality, uh, high quality content. So in terms of uh, the business model, actually is very much the same as what we have now. It's um, basically brands and publishers paying us to be able to engage their fans more richly. Right now they pay us just for the ability to put our web product um, on, on their web page. Um, and we're still supporting that. So if y'all are, and if y'all are interested, come, please come talk to me afterwards. Um, but with the mobile product, it becomes that they actually play in our, in our app, but they have all the same things. The ability to be able to provide assets, the ability to do moderation, the ability to control some of the look and feel, um, get some analytics, to control actually the types of assets that are allowed into it in the first place. Not just, not just provide their own, but also say, well, we want that, but we don't want these other kinds of assets to go into the content created. Um, so next steps for us, um, we are doing our, our beta of the creation product uh, in May, in the ne next couple months. Um, we are launching the app uh, wholesale in August, um, and we're still supporting the web product uh, through then. So if you're interested in being part of the beta group, again, please come in and, and talk to me afterwards. Um, and, uh, and certainly, you know, we'd love to share and kind of keep you guys up to date um, as we develop this, uh, the mobile app. Uh, like I said, we're a company in the middle of a uh, mobile transition ourselves. It uh, has taken a lot of things that you make a lot of assumptions for the web. Uh, and going against those or, or, or shifting your mindset can be very uncomfortable um, and cause you to really have to re-examine a, a lot of the basic assumptions that you made. Um, but it's been a very good, uh, very good process for the company. I think we'll make a much stronger product. So that's, uh, that's our spiel. That's kind of our, here we are in the middle of a metamorphosis from a pretty good caterpillar into an amazing butterfly. Um, and love to answer any questions. I have a question. Yes. How do you, um, one of the things about you, you know, user-generated content is, is the getting it on immediately and like you're saying, not making it difficult. But then how do you handle offensive, inappropriate, or even pornographic sure. content? Sure. So with our, with our web product, um, we took care of a lot of that. We actually, so Turner Media invested in us last year and we had the opportunity to work with a lot of Turner and Time Warner brands. And we learned from them, like, okay, how do you, there's a, there's a, there's a fine balance because 
you got to protect the brand, of course, if it's, if it's going to be associated with the brand. But you also have to empower the creator. If you say, hey, look, um, thanks for your submission. Uh, in three days, we'll let you know if we can share it. They ain't never coming back. Never coming back to share it. Uh, that ship has sailed. So what we do on the web um, is every piece of content gets its own unique URL. So when you create a piece of content, only people that have that URL um, can see it. Um, so it doesn't show up on sort of the main campaign or contest page. Um, the brand chooses if they want to feature it, uh, promote it to the top page. And the brand can also make it hidden um, so that nobody can see it. Plus there's a flag is inappropriate and a not yet vetted by a sticker that's automatically on it. We just ripped that off of CNN, so thank you, Victor. Um, uh, off, off I report, um, but we're part of the Turner family, so it's cool. Um, so, uh, so yeah, and, and that seems to allay the concerns of brands. Of okay, you know, we want to open the, the floodgates here. You know, we want user-generated content, but we're a little bit nervous. Um, plus, we give the brand the ability to control the assets that go in. If the brand wants to be only their own assets that are sort of remixed um, by the fans, then we can do that. Um, and you can just not allow them to upload their own, their own content. It's really different brands, different campaigns, have different tolerances for different kinds of UGC. Um, for the mobile, um, it's going to be m much the same kind of thing. You know, sort of like uh, we're going to have link, you know, links that when you share it out to specific trios um, and the same kind of, same kind of thing where uh, you make it immediately available, but, may, but sort of put all the disclaimers there and make it easy for the brand to hear if something's happening and then, uh, and then hide it if it's no good. So, cool. How do you see the, uh, the content being shared out at the end? So I have all these assets, I do it, and sure. does it, is it a video that is consumed only on your platform? Because does it go out as natively to, uh, to Facebook or Twitter or these kinds of things? Sure, sure. So you can view it in the app, or we'll also have a web player um, where, where you can sort of see it there. Um, in terms of how do you share it, yeah, when, when you, you, you add your media, you can record your voice, you can add some music, and then it's time to like post. And at that point, you can share it to Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Pinterest, I think, and, and may, maybe SMS as well. Um, and then it goes out and sort of puts notifications on, on, on all those places. Um, so it just makes it very easy for the, they have to authenticate to allow it to post, but yeah, yeah. Yes? Have you thought about uh, integration with broadcast and how these um, submissions will actually make it into some of the broadcast properties you mentioned? You mean like how will they then take them and air them? Yeah, like on TV. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, they you know, when a brand uh, does this kind of campaign or is working with us, then they definitely have the rights uh, to then take that content and air it or, or, or do whatever they want with it. Um, we make it very easy. It's embeddable anywhere. Um, yeah, I, I don't really see it, see it being an issue for them to then take the best ones and, and, and put them online. Yeah. Oh, actually, add to that. So then by them engaging with the brand, they, they technically sign off on the repurposing of that as yes. long as it's in a public forum and not a put it in a TV spot and all of a sudden do it that way. Right, yeah, it's all part of the terms of service terms and of service. yeah, firstborn, that kind of stuff. So, uh, I feel like I'm being preferential this side of the room. Anybody, anybody else? And just real quickly, uh, Misha will be available in our product demonstration at the end of uh, the session tomorrow at noon. He'll be set up to, to demonstrate Miograph to, to walk you through any issues that you might have or talk with you about how it might be applicable to your organization. Yep. Very good. Misha, All right. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. Cool. All right. <laughs>